All right. So I've done a series of pore paintings that I then let it dry and painted this uh, cream on top, but leaving some of the background behind. And I think this is going to be a series of hummingbirds. So I found my first image. I've been uh, taking video and photos of hummingbirds in the backyard, but um, they're just a little too blurry. So I really love this turquoise teal um, with the background. So I'm just going to start by sketching in a base layer, some blue. And I like to find inspiration in the background about where the images want to be. Um, so I kind of see this shape of the paper here. It looks like a wing and a uh, bird head. And I, I love the idea of the, the texts and the color kind of showing through. So um, I'm just going to start drawing with the paint, knowing that if I don't like it, I'm going to paint over it. I think a lot of people get caught up in this um, permanence of paint, which is um, really not true because well, you can erase, but you can do lots of layering and it's very liberating to just paint over something when it's not working out. One of my favorite things that my college professor in my BFA program, Peg Shogren, used to say over and over again is don't treat any area is too precious. Always be able to paint over something for the good of the overall composition and I tell my students that as well because it's really liberating to not get stuck when things are not working. Let's see. So this whole time that I'm kind of drawing this image in with the paint I'm continually looking at you know, the positive space, the negative space, and looking at those relationships of one object to the next, one form to the next, one shape to the next. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people, a lot of painters feel more comfortable sketching with pencil first and then transferring onto the paint, but it's really liberating just to be able to jump in um, with the paint and not feel, um, I don't know, too, you know, stuck to that. Just being able to get in with the process and layer as you go. Um, I just dipped my brush in some water just to thin down the paint a little bit, a little bit, get a little thinner line. And I'm looking at the angle here and I can already see it's a little, I want it to be a little bit smoked here. I'm just going to kind of quickly brush in some of the texture of those feathers. Got a little paint on my brush. Um, let's see. Where's this edge? I'm looking at this negative space in the image here oops, in between the wings. Um, where where is that? I really do need to just get a thinner brush to block these in. This brush isn't cutting it. Let's see what I got over here. Um, ha. Just put water for now. It's really all about the right tool for the right effect you're going for. You know, um, the landscape paintings having a fan brush to capture that tree texture, like Bob Ross, is really important. Trying to do thin detail work with a thicker, bright brush is not going to be fun. And it will be challenging. <laughs> and uh, using the right tool for the right job is really important. For now, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the shape of the bird here, the body, where the body meets up with the tail. I'm going to block in some darker. Here. But like I said, right now I just have these two colors of blue on my palette to block in uh, lights and darks, and I'm going to come back in with layers to develop more of it. And then I'm also looking at this tail. I don't know how well you can see this in the video, but um, how far down is this face from the 
is the body part where the head meets the body and where that tail starts to come out this way. And my goal with this kind of realistic image representation is making what I see here match my painting. You know, depending on your goals, maybe that's not your goal. And uh, then I do some exaggeration. So I'm going to go ahead and move this here so I can maybe extend this tail off the edge. And I'm not going to get caught up in the detail. I'm, just, I'm looking at this whole shape like as one shape versus individual shapes. And I'll come in and lock it in, um, the detail. And I'll get rid of this body. Just it comes in. Nice, and then there's my tail. And then this over here. Right now I'm really studying the white shape right here. And let's see. I need to get some darker paint and kind of clarify some key landmarks over here. So there's this top edge of this tail feather. It actually does line up with this tail feather there. And block that in. And capture some of the texture and the movement. Um, now I could have like shortened this tail feather to like fit it on the page, but it's always better to maintain the proportion and let things, the objects extend off the edges. So now I'm, as I've blocked this shape in and I'm comparing it to this, I can do some tricks like measure the distance. Like how, how wide is this whole shape in comparison to the body? And I can see in the image that head, this little, like, where the neck and body connect to the wing, this shape here, can, this distance is the same as this distance. So if I double check that on my painting, I can see I'm pretty darn close and it's okay if it's not exact. Um, and then I'm going to double check this wing, this lower wing. I realize this is at a little bit of a funky angle. Maybe I can get the angle of the, of the camera to match. And then I'm going to block it in here. And then I'm looking at the length of the tail. My original length here doesn't seem to match up. And so maybe I'll actually measure the distance of this wing. And find something else to compare it to, like this angle from this point to the middle of the tail feather is the same as this point to the end of the tail feather. And this is a great trick for anybody trying to increase your observation skills and make your proportions match. Just use some math and some proportion and some some sighting and actually just check check your work and make some marks to see what can be shifted over. So I can see that's actually pretty close. And I'm going to look at the angle of that feather to this feather. And I can see this length from here to there is quite a bit longer than this tail, than this wing, not tail feather. <laughs> so I'm actually going to extend this off of my canvas even more. Um, to capture that. Sometimes I'll wrap the image around the canvas. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do that for this. I really should get some more colors on my palette. I'm going to get some yellow, mix some teal. I just want to finish blocking, blocking this in first. So I'm going to paint in some color for these 
and also capturing the line, the direction of these lower tail feathers. Same with these. And I'm looking at my shape here. This, sorry, you guys can't really see what I'm pointing at here, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the lower wing here, this distance. Probably I could fit two of those in here or slightly more than that. And I'm noticing on my painting here, I've got like half and half. So what I need to do then is just lower this line. Like I said, when you're drawing with paint, uh, just relax and have fun with it because as you make these adjustments, just paint over your lines that aren't working. Paint over them and that's very liberating. Um, there's so many different techniques and styles and modalities of painting that the best thing to do is make a lot of paintings and learn from a lot of painters. So watching a lot of YouTube tutorials and looking at history and all of that. The more information you have, the more you can synthesize and then apply into your own discovery. Darken up this edge. You see, I'm not using black. I actually rarely use black um, as a painter. Uh, my favorite combo is um, burnt umber, phthalo green, and magenta. It makes a really rich black without actually using black. Black kind of voids things out, um, but you can create a really dark color with those other colors, which is kind of magical. Mm. Just block in that beak and then we'll call it good for now. To be continued. <laughs> Again, I'm looking at the length. I don't want to make it too long or too short. I watered down my brush a little bit. And then you see I'm going to rest my hand on the canvas slightly so that my hand is steady and I can create a really crisp straight edge versus a wobbly, wobbly beak. And I'm looking at the alignment of the eye, beak, and I'll just start here, bring it on down. Widen the top over here. And I think this might be good for a start. I'm gonna crisp up this edge um, when I start adding the details. And <clears throat> I've got all these rectangles going on here, which is kind of cool, but I think I might uh, add some layers of uh, floral forms, um, kind of bring a little more context to Hummingbird. Man, in a video I watched, or I was videotaped on my deck, these two hummingbirds diving so fast and coming up in a circle and going up as high as they could and diving back down, and it was this magical kind of uh, playful they weren't just eating and flying and drinking and eating and resting. They were like, looked like they were intentionally playing and having fun. Um, I think that might be fun to play with, with these paintings. But for now, I'm just, I had to start. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't really like it that much right now, which is common when you block in a first layer. It doesn't seem unified. It doesn't seem finished, which is good because it's a process. And so I guess my point for all of you painters who are painting and be watching this video, students and everyone, um, just be okay with the process and know that you're going to make so many revisions and changes over your process of painting that as much as you can let go of your inner critic that's debilitating, like, 
oh, this is terrible. Why am I even doing this? You know, these kinds of thoughts, let go of those thoughts, but to re retain the um, analytical, good, constructive critic that you hold within, you know, to make the painting better, but also make sure you're enjoying the process and thinking about what if questions and ask for feedback as you go. I'm kind of wishing that I painted this at a diagonal so the bird was shifted this way. So I don't know, I might play with it a little bit. I'm going to add another bird up here and then play around with adding some flower forms. So for now, I'm going to let this dry. Let me know what you think. Love some suggestions.